Picture the scene, if you will. Westeros lies in tatters and the great houses jostle for position. The Night King desires for more than the destruction of man. Complete domination of trade and industry. Welcome to EU4 and the world of ice and fire. Okay, so let's set up the game. Starting in the year 100. And um, we're going to be playing on very hard difficulty. Three things to think about before you start. Firstly, the Night King. Six monarch points across the board, which is really strong in the early game. Second thing, there's plenty of space between the home state and any aggressors. Uh, it will buy time to develop the provinces, which is really valuable. And finally, White Walkers are unable to perform diplomatic actions. So all your Diplo points can go towards techs and improvements. Okay, now we've dealt with all the pre-game stuff, we can get into it. Welcome to the channel, hope you're having a great day, and you enjoy the video. Alright, so the first thing to do is take a look at the provinces. We've got World's End, which is our capital province, and then four other smaller undeveloped provinces. Taking a quick look at the trade goods we've got available, we've got some fur, spices, more spices, and some more fur, so we've done pretty well. Spices are quite a valuable commodity. Small army of 4k to begin with, but we're not going to do anything with them just yet. Looking at the navy, we've got three transport cogs and seven light ships. Each of the light ships is worth two point trade power if protecting the trade node. We're going to get rid of the cogs because we don't need those. And we're going to set these light ships to protect the trade node. Looking at the cash situation, we're running a deficit of 1.58 ducats. To reduce the early costs, we can get rid of the level 4 fort. It's wasted money spent on maintenance. We don't currently need the highest level of fort available. We're also going to invest the diplo points we've got into production at Frost Fort. Cost of improving development does rise with each level, so that's something to watch out for. Okay, so taking a quick look at the technology screen, You've got the admin tech, you've got diplo tech, and you've got the military tech. What I want to be doing ideally is to be getting the administrative tech up to level 5 so I can unlock the first idea group. We won't be focusing too much on diplo tech because we'll be putting our points into the production and we won't be focusing too much on military tech either as we'll be trying to boost manpower. One last thing to do before we move the game on a bit and that's to send the merchant to the trade node. We only have access to one trade node at the moment, which is beyond the wall, so send him there. Nothing else to do at this point in time, so we'll send the game forward a year. Okay, so we've sorted the money situation out, making two ducats a month, which is good. And we've also fulfilled a mission, so let's have a quick look at that. Right, so we've fulfilled the high income mission, which required us to make 1.98 ducats a month and we're currently making 3.62 so we complete that 5% reduction on construction cost and construction time we have 234 points in military power so we're going to increase the base manpower in world's end by one we have a few spare diplo points as well we're going to improve the base level in nightstone Okay, time to move the game forward, and I'll stop at any messages or events. Okay, so the Night King's got himself an heir. Uh, in this game, we'll only be using him as a general, because the Night King can die in battle. Um, we really don't want to risk him, and that way we can keep a steady stream of monarch points coming in. Entering year 102, we've got some cash available to make some provincial improvements. We can build a farm in the capital province, tax is currently the highest earner in World's End, and the farm applies a modifier of 25% to the tax take. It will take a while to pay for itself, but an increase of 0.2 per month isn't too shabby. 
Next on the list to use spare military power, so we'll invest in base manpower at Frost Fort. Each increase gives roughly another 300 soldiers in the reserves. Okay, so we haven't taken a chance to see what the rest of Westeros is up to yet, uh, so we'll go on a quick tour of the major houses. Starting with the Northmen, House Stark currently at war with the Umbers and Boltons, allied with Castle Black. Hopefully the Starks won't die in 50 years like in my test game. The Freys are currently at peace, not making trouble or backstabbing as of yet. Similar story at House Arryn, the host of the Moondor Skydiving Championships. The Lannisters haven't begun murdering yet, which is nice to see, all calm at Castle Rock. And nothing of note at Highgarden either. Starks seem to be the northern aggressors at the moment. Taking a look at King's Landing, the Targaryens currently sit atop the Iron Throne. Viserys is the ruler, and if the game follows canon, the Dance of Dragons event will kick off in the year 129. For those who aren't aware, it refers to the civil war between Aegon II and Rhaenyra Targaryen. Apologies for the potential name butchery that took place there. Quick word on estates, we'll cover them in detail next episode. Loyalty shouldn't deteriorate too rapidly, so we can concentrate on other things. Time to move the game forward again, a couple of years should do it. We should have a nice pile of points to invest and some money to play with. Alright, it's January 104 and we've got some shrine power to use. Haven't touched on this as of yet, but it's a mechanic available to the others due to the chiromancy religion type. We can chop and change between enchantments as we see fit, if we have 100 shrine power to spend. Certain situations will require a change in strategy, so it can be quite useful. For now, we'll select the National Manpower Modifier of 15%. Should push the manpower reserves up to somewhere around 16,000. Plenty of Diplo points to spend, so we'll upgrade the base production in Crucible of Ice, Renshaw and Nightstone. And we'll also improve the base manpower in the same provinces. The upgrade to admin tech still six months away, so we'll move forward to June. June came and went, that was a slight miscalculation on my part, but now we can afford to upgrade the admin tech. That gives us an improvement in governing capacity. It's not really an issue at this point in time, because we don't plan to take on any more provinces. It will become more important as we go through the game. We have spare Diplo power again, so we'll invest into the development of Frost Fort. Quick sit rep on the money situation and we're making 2.63 ducats profit every month. It's not a massive increase from where we started but it's a step in the right direction. One way to supplement income is to find a gold, silver or copper province. If we take a quick look at the trade goods screen we can see the goods created in each province. Some of the goods are unknown to us currently but the map will become more populated over time. There are gold provinces nearby in Then territory and there's one in Iceguard lands so we will look to target those in the near future. The extra gold will help to build up the capital quickly and to bankroll the army. Another thing to consider with trade is whether to diversify or adopt an aggressive trading strategy. If you adopt the eggs in one basket mentality, you might stand to earn more in the short term but be affected by changes in goods value. Diversification will keep income more consistent with lower gains overall. Time to move the game forward for the final time this video to July 105. Visiting the trade node briefly, we have the third highest trade power in the area. It's a good start, but when we've got some more money available, we can build some more ships and add to the fleet. We can also recruit an advisor to earn some more Diplo points. Checking on the war in the north, the Night's Watch have taken land from the Umbers. In this game, they'll act like any other faction. They're not confined to the wall and the territories beside it. They have the Starks as allies, so they could become a major player. With all the early building blocks in place, I'll end the video here. In the next one, we'll look at the estates and how to control them, as well as building power and influence. This strategy is a slow burner, but the foundations put in place now will help the other snowball later on. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, leave a like as it will help the channel out. Thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, and hope to see you in the next one.